Yo, so uh, that's me again, Callum Hems, with another book review. And uh, today we are reviewing Hunger by Newt Hampson. Uh, should you read it? Yes, phenomenal. Five, ten out of ten, five stars if you're a star person, ten rockets out of rockets if you're a rocket person, uh, twenty pound coins out of twenty pound coins if you're a pound coin person. Um, why did I think it was so good? You know, like, okay, so I read Celine, uh, Journey to the End of the Night before I read this book, so, and, um, I didn't enjoy Journey to the End of the Night, which, uh, is in another video, so just plug in my other video, go check that one out about Celine if you haven't already. Anyway, uh, it got me thinking that maybe that was because of the translation, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look into the translation of uh, Journey to the End of the Night, find a different one, and then read it again, but in a different translation to see if I actually enjoyed it. Because as I was reading Hunger by Newt Hampson, I was loving the simplicity. I mean, not let's not say simplistic, but clear. Every sentence is concise. Every sentence is understandable. There's no waffle. It's very straightforward to read. There's no extra, or at least it feels like there's no extra words, there's no extra explanations. Every sentence is crisp and absolutely understandable and all of the essential ingredients are there. And there's, there is more than that because the fact that it is so simplistic is what creates more than that. But if we speak about it in a literary or a poetical way, it's like there's no additional flowery words, there's no spices, but essentially that's what gives it the flavor. It's that simple flowing sentences, which are very readable. And that gives it that brilliance and because it was originally written in Norwegian, obviously I think that a big deal of that is about the translation. So I've read some, uh, like Dostoevsky, uh, but, and I've discussed this with my Russian friend, that um, I read Dostoevsky, I think it was, oh, I can't remember the title of it, but it was, uh, ah, oh, it just came to me and then it went, uh, Bobob or something. Bobob. It's about a cemetery. Um, by Bob. Oh, the name's gone. But it's about, it's a short story by Dostoevsky about a cemetery. And uh, the translation that I read, I didn't enjoy it. And when I discussed it with a Russian friend, I understood that it was a very, very good short story. So translations really do matter. So the, the, the hunger that I read was translated from the Norwegian of Newt Hampson by George Egerton. Um, so I read the George Egerton translation. I would hope to read some Newt Hampson books, some more Newt Hampson novels, and I will try to find the same translator if he has done translations of other Newt Hampson books because I thought it was it was just great. It was it was incredible to read. Like I said, the uh, the voice, the style, I loved it. Uh, it's something that I would like to imitate in my writing. Moving on from that, let's talk about the plot. The plot was great. The plot... Now, I think I got into these type of, like, call them masculine writers through Bukowski. Now I'm coming out of that. Like, the doorway for me was Bukowski, and now I understand that actually Bukowski wasn't the doorway. Bukowski was... Uh, one one stone you know wall of these stones of authors god that's a terrible metaphor uh, one leaf on this tree one blade of grass in this field of writers you get you get my point so i was interested in what inspired bukowski to write and when I came to these writers, I go, oh my God, some of them are so much better. Like, 
John Fante, Ask the Dust. What what an amazing book. Uh, and originally in my head I was thinking, oh, that was the inspiration for Bukowski. Now I understand that, okay, we can almost like take Bukowski at the picture and this is a standalone book. I know that sounds stupid, but I'm just getting there. Um, so the same with Newt Hampson, amazing, standalone, phenomenal book, way better than Bukowski. And uh, it pains me to say that because I love Bukowski, but Newt Hampson, wow, way better. I mean, this book is clearer, the plot is so much, the, the plot is um, tight. Tighter, much tighter than a Bukowski novel. Bukowski is quite loose, but it feels to me that hunger flows. Every scene flows onto the next scene. The transitions are extremely well written. The writing is very smooth. Uh, you're just riding on a wave the whole way through the book. It took me four days to read. I read 50 pages a day. Um... When I came back to read it, for example, I read it on the first day, and I was like, wow, this is great. Came back to read it. Wow, this is great. Came back on the third day to read it. Took me a little longer to get in there, but only, you know, when you kind of come from a busy day and then you start reading. But it took me about two pages to go whoop and sink back in and get back in the book, which is incredible for a writer to do, to draw you back in like that when you haven't, when you put the book down and then you come back and start reading again for it to just grab you like that within one or two pages and get you back into the story is a sign of a very good writer so that so that happened um, so I don't want to give the plot away essentially it is about hunger hunger for everything Hunger for food, hunger for a place to stay, hunger for a woman, hunger uh, for, for, for friends, hunger for, for people, hunger for, um, for freedom, hunger for status, hunger for um, wanting to portray the image of yourself. I mean, hunger for respect, I guess. Um, Every type of hunger you can think of, um, and he do, he he doesn't have any of it. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have money. He doesn't have a relationship. He he has friends that he visits, but they frequently uh, chuck, you know toss him away, tell him to go away, etc. Um, some great scenes in it. One scene where he he's so poor that he takes the buttons off his coat and tries to sell the buttons in a pawn shop, and they reject him and say we don't we're not gonna buy your buttons here and um so you're almost watching the the kind of downfall of this man through all of this pain and this misery and this suffering and you're you're with him all the way you're rooting for him you're egging him on and you're, you're saying god you know i hope that he makes something good out of this so I'm not going to spoil the ending. You'll have to read and find out. Um, I do want to speak about the ending. I personally really enjoyed it. Um, so there's that through line there, which just maintains, you know, it just goes whole, the whole way through the story. There's just a, a through line. And it's a bit like uh, the, the sun, is it The Sun Always Rises by Hemingway? Yeah. Uh, where at the end you find out that it, it's... I'm going to spoil the ending, but you're going to find out that it's always going to be like this. There's no other way that it could be. So that hunger just maintains itself the whole way through the book. It's not like it's a sad ending. It's not like it's a happy ending. But ultimately, that never gets resolved. It just is permanently there and... I love that because it's so un-Hollywood because you're expecting that oh he's going to get success at the end of the book and actually he doesn't he just carries on just his direction changes 
but that hunger is still there and nothing nothing changes only the only his path um so it was a cool ending i really did think uh the beginning is amazing as well i love the way that the, the you know he, he 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 i've been told that you shouldn't start with a character waking up in a room well it starts with him waking up in a room the reason it's interesting is because the room that he's in is interesting he's in an attic and there's things around and the book describes his alarm clock waking up the way the attic looks the way he gets up in the room and then walks out into the town so um when i read the beginning i thought wow this is great i didn't know who the character was but we're we get a look at his surroundings where he is and that is what is interesting his room is interesting um oh oh well he must be an interesting guy because he lives in this uh interesting location and then slowly out the course of the book we find out more and more and more and more and more about this character and there is this awesome awesome uh awesome like writing style or narration that 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 new hampson does and it's to the character believes he's one thing and by the way the character is never named and also there's a woman who he falls in love with with inside the novel and she's never named either which is just great what a wonderful thing to do in a book is and then i don't know why it's wonderful to do but it's we care so deeply about what happens to this guy and we don't even know his name, presumably Newt Hampson if it's autobiographical, biographical, but we never get his name, we never get... Even there's a line that when he's with the girl that he likes, uh, it says, we, we swapped names with each other, something like that. And then it just moves on and carries on with the story. Well, what are their names? Not important. Um, because it's it's the hunger that's important and it's what the character does about the hunger that's important not what he's named and maybe that's also the way that he feels about himself like entirely worthless nameless so down on his luck that um he feels nameless maybe that's why newt hamilton decided to do that so yeah um Right, but we, we, so the character says, the character keeps saying, I'm an honest man, but then he goes and he lies to all these people around the town. That's why I love the book, it's the character going around the town and exploring the town and going to different locations and doing different things and going to different shops. So we get a picture of this town or city that he lives in, which is also really interesting to watch that build up over the course of the book. Um, to get a picture of the town is is great. So we're finding out more about the, t the city that he lives in. We're finding out about the people that live there with him. We're finding about him as a character who says, I'm an honest man. I respect myself. And then uh, he goes out and he treats people really badly and he lies to them and he uh, takes money from people not really stealing but um he finds ways around uh, doing things that make him dishonorable even though he has this very like he believes he's an honest man but um it's very interesting it's the whole unreliable narrator thing which i personally don't like that label uh i don't feel that it describes this technique very well, I would say this, this, I wrote it down, it's like a contradiction, or hypocrite, I think, a hypocritical narrator, who says, I'm honest, and then we actually see, from what he does, that he's not, so, it's a very good read, it's a very, very good read, and I recommend you to read it if you have not already. I feel like I could go on about this book forever, but I'm going to stop there.